I think they're selling 150 tickets at $100 a piece. So um, the odds are 150 to 1, you win a new car. So, um, And also, I know today is Small Group Sunday. Small group leaders, you want to have your small group? Great. I know Delanda's having girl time out there for all the single ladies. So um, go and be a part of that. But if you're not doing anything tonight, come back tonight. And let's, let's worship with our Arabic brothers and sisters tonight. They're going to do songs in English and Arabic. And uh, Pastor Devraj from uh, India, he's a superintendent of northern India for the Assemblies of God. And uh, so he influences a lot of people. And I hear he speaks great English because he's from America, and I think and he went there. So um, come back tonight. Don't just stay home, you know. Plug in. Thank you. <laughs> All right, you ready for the word today? I know it feels like we've already had church, but I'm, now it's my turn. <laughs> uh, Darren, I, I met him and Heidi yesterday. They actually are the ones that bought Pastor Otto's house in Guatemala. They, they had two homes there together. They bought that facility. He said we brought a, bought a ministry center. It was Pastor Otto's homes in Guatemala that he had. So um, that's how we got to net connected. And they would actually like us as a church to do a missions trip there in um, 2019 um, to come down there and do some crusades and do outreach there. So be thinking about that if, if Africa's too soon for you. Let me just tell you what Africa's going to cost. $2,500. Okay? That gets you your plane ticket, um, hotel, and food. And, and a ride. Because <laughs> you do a little bit of car travel, too. So, <clears throat> Just so you know. So when you come today after the service... Just meet me right down here, and we'll, we'll talk about it. i got some information for you. Wow, praise Jesus. I'm just loving God right now, man. This is fun. You know, the title of my message today is Real Love. How many of you know what real love is? <laughs> if you know Jesus, you know real love, amen? Because he loves you unconditionally. So why don't we stand today? We're going to read the word out of Romans chapter 8, verses 31 through 39. Reading it out of the Message Bible today, I, I usually read like six, seven different versions of what I'm going to talk about. And I read this one and I thought, man, I really like what this says. So let's go. Let's read it together. Ready? Begin. So, what do you think? With God on our side like this, how can we lose? If God didn't hesitate to put everything on the line for us, embracing our condition and exposing himself to the worst by sending his own son... Is there anything else he wouldn't gladly and freely do for us? And who would dare tangle with God by messing with one of God's chosen? Who would dare even to point a finger? The one who died for us, who raised to life for us, is in the presence of God at this very moment, sticking up for us? Do you think anyone is going to be able to drive a wedge between us and Christ's love for us? There is no way, not trouble, not hard times, not hatred, not hunger, not homelessness, not bullying threats, not backstabbing, not even the worst sins listed in Scripture. They kill us in cold blood because they hate you. We're sitting ducks. They pick us off one by one. None of this phases us because Jesus loves us. I'm absolutely convinced that nothing, nothing, living or dead, angelic or demonic, Today or tomorrow, high, low, unthinkable, unthinkable or unthinkable, absolutely nothing can get between us and God's love because of the way that Jesus, our master, has embraced us. Hallelujah. Oh, Father, we give you praise today and thanksgiving for this powerful word. And Lord, we know that there is nothing that can separate us from your love. So I pray today, Father God, that truly we would grasp a hold of your real love, that, Lord, it'd be transformational in our lives, and, Lord, that we would just walk in the victory of knowing you and the love that you have for us as we celebrate Jesus today. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, amen. You may be seated. 
I, I like the, the verse, you know, it says, none of this phases us because Jesus loves us. I know that people are going through things, the people are being challenged by things, but what he's saying is that none of that stuff should phase you. None of that stuff should control you. What you're going through is life, okay? And it's, it's common to everybody. We're all living, okay? We all go through things. But it's none of this, this junk that, that the enemy's trying to throw out should phase you at all because what? God loves you. And when you enter into God's perfect love, what's happening in your life should just be destroyed. I just, I just think it just, it's so great, his love. It's so powerful, his love. So today, number one, I want to talk to you about is with God, you can't lose. With God, we cannot lose. Amen? With God, we are victorious. We cannot lose. You cannot lose with God. There's no way. When you have an in-depth understanding of who God is and what he has done for you, you begin to get the proper perspective of who he is. The devil is a created being, okay? He was an angel who was under God. He was created by God. He's not omnipotent. He's not omnipresent. He's not omniscient. He's not all-powerful. He's not everywhere at once, and he doesn't know everything. Okay, the devil's a created being by God that tried to rise up against God. He's not on the same plane as God. He's down here, and God's up here, and especially when it comes to power. But we give the devil absolutely too much power in our lives. And we need to give God the power in our lives, amen? We need to recognize that with God, I can't lose. I can't lose, hallelujah. What the devil tries to do is influence your life. Okay, his plan is to deceive you in any way possible. He tries to bring influence into your life. He tries to disturb your life. He tries to deceive your life so that you'll start doubting God what the devil does. And listen, he starts when you're a kid. I, I, Pastor Darren, the missionary, was talking to him, and, and his, his dad was a pastor, and he said, you know, he says, I, I've, I've seen church life, and I've seen what happens in churches, and he says, I've seen deacons rise up against my dad and, and, and call him all kinds of terrible things and rise up and try to, and to get him out. And he says, I've seen people rise up against my dad. and I've seen church splits. I've seen this, this ugly side of the church, you know. And, he, and he's like, praise God, we just keep going. You just keep going. You just keep moving forward, amen. None of this stuff matters. Jesus. Jesus loves you, amen. And so, you know, but the devil, he does not have any power over you. You can't lose when you know the real love of God. The devil has nothing on you. God's love is unconditional towards you. And this is the love that gives. This is a love that gives. You know, because um, I love my kids, because I love my grandkids, because I love my wife. I want to give to them, amen? I, I mean, I want to give. You know, like I told you last Sunday, I, I, I'm really getting better about my giving. You know, not just, I, I, I give to the Lord for a long time, but I mean, like, even to my wife, I, I, I want to just bless her socks off. I want her to just feel how much I love her by my giving to her, by just pouring out, expressing my love to her. Like I said, her birthday is October 15th. I already bought her present. She's trying to bribe me, too, to tell her what it is. It's funny. I said, come on, just seek the Lord the way you're seeking this. <laughs> I'm teasing you, honey. You know that. But everybody say real love. Yeah. Come on, real love. Yeah. Oh, wow. Amen. Real love. That's what God is. He is real love. Amen. It's not the fake conditional kind of love. It's real love. His real love is waiting for you to receive it. See, we, 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 we think we're waiting on You don't have to wait for God. He's ready. He's done it. He's ready to move in your life. He's ready to do all that he's created you for. You don't have to wait on God. 
God anymore? I mean, I mean, I wait on the Lord and pray and continue to get direction. But God, will, he will reveal himself to you. He'll show himself true. He'll, he'll show you his love. He'll just pour it out on you. In 1 Corinthians uh, 13, 4, it says, love is patient. Everybody say patient. God is patient with us, amen? He is waiting on us. See, we, we look, love is patient, love is kind, it does not envy, does not boast, is not proud. We think about, well, that's how we got to love each other, but just listen, this is how God loves us. He's been patient with us, amen? You know, he was patient with me when I was younger because I did my own thing. You know, when, when we got married at 19 and just the stress of this life and being married at such a young age, and bam, 21, we had the first kid. 23, we had the second kid. It was like, oh my gosh. You know, I felt like I had to work 24 hours a day, you know, just to support my family. Like Darren said, what do you, would you do if that was your kid? Man, I just worked and worked and worked to support my family. But then I realized that God's got a plan. And when I entered into his plan of the real love that he had for me, and I received his real love, man, my idea of how to work changed. Because I began to realize that the more that I sow to God, the more I'm going to reap God. So I sowed my time, I sowed my finances, and my energy to God. Amen? And, you know, there came a point where it's finally like I was sowing so much and God was blessing so much that I had to just stop doing what I was doing and just do holy God. The ministry. You know, because I own my own business, and it just, it just kept, the kingdom just kept expanding in my life. My customers were like, w where are you going? Well, I'm going to go to the Philippines. What, what do you mean? You're in the middle of my project. I said, I know, but I, I got to go to the Philippines for 11 days. Don't worry, I'll be back. It'll be done on time. Yeah, and that's what I would do. And then it's like, well, you're going where? Oh, I'm going to go to China. Are you kidding me? No, I'm going to go over to China for just, just 12 days. And they're like, you know, so it got to where, you know, the, the, door, the Lord's pushing me this way, and I let go of that way. And in 2005, I sold all my machinery. And listen, I gave away my tools. All my personal tools, my toolbox, all this high-dollar equipment I had, I gave it away. Because I'm not going back. Amen? See, I remember this guy one time, he's, he was homeless. And... Um, he had a little tent down the street. It was in a good spot. It was in a, this, there's these mounds of dirt and these trees, and, and he had that tent right in there. And one of the ladies in the church, the older lady said, oh, why don't you come live in my home with me? And she talked to me about it, and I said, if you really want, you know. So he went and lived with her. So I got him, and I said this. I said, give away your tent over there. Why? That's a good spot. You know, I said, because if you don't let go of your past, you'll never step into your future. You may look like it, but if you always keep that tie, you won't go where God wants you to be. When you experience that real love of God, you're willing to just let go of that stuff and say, I'm going with Jesus. Because he has a plan, amen? So when you understand his real love, you get it that there's no one greater than God, amen? He is incredible in his love towards us. The way I started receiving this real love is, is I, I went all in with Jesus. I just went all in with Jesus. Remember what I've told you the last few weeks. You can't get baptized in water with Jesus with one foot in the tank and one foot out of the tank. You know, you can't do it. You've got to go all in, get in the water, to get all wet, amen? Especially in our baptismal up there. There's no way you could just keep one foot up on dry ground. And what I'm saying is, you can't keep one foot in the world, doing things the world's way, and one foot in the kingdom, doing things God's way. It doesn't work. You've got to go all in with Jesus. He says, be hot or be cold, but don't be on the fence, amen? Be hot or be cold. And being cold is not a bad thing. Being hot is not a bad thing. Just, just don't be bitter. Because what it means, when, when you read that in Revelation, what he's referring to is referring to two streams of water that fed Laodicea. One of them was, was cold water from one city, and it was very refreshing water in that city. And when it, but when it got to Laodicea, it was lukewarm water. 
And then there was another city that had hot water, and that hot water was very healing. And when that, wa that water, they had a canal to Laodicea, but by the time it got to Laodicea, it was lukewarm. And so you got these two canals coming together with lukewarm water that created a bitter water. See, so you can be hot, you can be filled with a stream of refreshing, or you can be, or be cold with the refreshing, or hot with healing, but don't be lukewarm and just play around and try and do church in the world. Be hot or cold. Amen? Be hot or cold. Being cold's not, not you know, when you read it in here, I know we've always said, you know, to be cold meant you're not on fire for Jesus, but it, what it really, when you study it out, where the rivers come from, it just means don't be bitter. Don't be bitter waters. Be refreshing. Be healing in the name of Jesus. Amen? You know, so as I went all in with God, and, and what I mean when I say I went all in to receive his love, um, I just dove in with him. I surrendered all. We started letting go of the things that have been holding us back. We let go of words spoken against us, let go of wrongs done to us. We just surrendered all to Jesus and stopped worrying about what people think. That was one of the things that Delanda liked and disliked about me when we met. I didn't care what people think about me. <laughs> she liked it because it was so freeing, but she didn't like it because I didn't care if she didn't like my hair or, you know, <laughs> I didn't care if she didn't like my shirt. I, you know, I just didn't care, you know. And, and she's like, maybe you ought to care a little. <laughs> One of these days I'm going to let you preach again, honey. <laughs> but 1 John 4, 18, it says, there's no fear in love, amen? Perfect love casts out all fear because fear involves torment. But he who fears has not been made perfect in love. So the fear involves torment. So I'm not afraid to go all in with Jesus. Because I, I don't want to, I don't want to live in torment. Amen. I don't want to be tormented by the world. Fear comes a result as not receiving that perfect love of God. His love is real. Now, when Delana and I got married, it wasn't real love, and uh, we probably had a lot of fear and anxiety about each other. Do they really love me? Are we gonna, are we gonna make it? Are we gonna stick together? Because we hadn't really entered into, you know, God's perfect love together, and. and our perfect love for each other. But once Delanda and I just it got past our own junk and we entered into this perfect love, we started enjoying each other instead of worrying about each other. And it's the same thing with God. When you stop worrying about what God's going to do and you start enjoying God, it's amazing what he'll do. It's amazing what he'll do in your life. So don't worry about what God will do if you go all in with him. Just start enjoying him. Amen? Enjoy his presence. Just enjoy his love. Because God's got a perfect plan for you. Amen? I, I know when we were younger, Delana thought, oh my gosh, he's going to send us to Africa. Well, now we say, all right, God, we'll go to Africa. We don't care. We just love God. Amen? Just enter into that love. Don't let anything hold you back. Remember what you're going through today. Your trials, your tribulation, does not even come close to the glory that you will experience in Christ. Remember last week's message, nothing can hold you back. Nothing. There's nothing that can hold you back from what God has intended for you, except you. Take you out of the equation and just step into it. Just receive it. I just receive your love, God. In Christ, you are a son and daughter of God. So who can be against you? It's real love. Everybody say real love. Real love. Number two, God has gone all in with you. God has gone all in with you. He didn't hold back giving his very best to you so that you could have real life, that you could experience real love. He went all in. He sent Jesus, his son, to die for you and me. Amen? He went all in. He gave it all. He gave the very best. He said, I'm going to give it all for you. Romans 5, 8. Let's look at that. It's not in my notes. It says, but God demonstrates his own love towards us in that while we are still sinners, Christ died for us. See, it wasn't based on, oh, they're going to be so good to me. They're going to just worship me and the whole world will love me. I'll send my son Jesus. Oh, my gosh, no. He said, while they're still sinners, 
I'm going to die for them. That's the beauty of his love. And, and, and receiving that love is what's incredible. We have to take the limits off of God and start believing what he says about us. Amen? You need to get into the word and find out what is God saying about you. Live in Christ. This is how I live in Christ. I believe in him. With all my heart, I believe in him. I read about him. I talk about him. And I receive what he has to say to me, written and spoken. Because God speaks to his people. John 10, 27, it says, My sheep hear my voice. Everybody say, hear. hear. I remember Delana was on a phone conversation with another Christian lady. And, and Delana says, well, you know, the Lord said to me. And she began to say, and the lady said, what? She says, well, the Lord said to me. She goes, you're saying that God talks to you. Delana's like, well, well Yeah. Really, you think you're one of those that God talks to? Well, listen, you can be one of those that God talks to if you just listen. I remember one day God spoke to me right here. He spoke to me, and man, the Holy Spirit fell on me, and, and he, he just he touched my life. I said, God, why don't you talk to me like that all the time? He said, why don't you listen like that all the time? See, it's not on him, it's on us, amen? We've got to learn to tap in to listen to God, because it says, my sheep hear my voice. I know them. They follow me. I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. My Father's given them to me. is greater than all, and no one is able to snatch them out of my Father's hand. I and the Father are one. Woo! You can hear from God today. I, every day, I, I say, every day whether I say it silently or I say it out loud. I say, good morning, Lord, I love you. He says, good morning, Ron, I love you. Every day, every day I have that conversation with God. I lay there and I just talk to him and I just meditate on him and I think about him and, and I can just, I, I just receive his thoughts for me. I receive his words for my life and it just puts a joy in my heart. Because God is thinking about you. Listen, Jeremiah 29, 11, he says, I know the thoughts I think towards you, says the Lord. So God, the God of heaven and earth, is up there thinking about you today. He's not thinking about, well, how can I make Delonda's life miserable? She's thinking about, how can I bless Delonda today? How can I bless Holly today? How can I give you, as a congregation, an ear that hears his voice? Because that's what he wants. He wants us to really hear from him, and he wants us to have a greater understanding. He doesn't, <clears throat> God doesn't want us to try things out to see if that's it. He wants us to know it's it. Enrique, he doesn't want you to try this to see if it's a good score. He wants you to know you have a confident expectation in God that he's speaking to you, and you go that way. That's what God has for you, that you have a confidence in him, and, and you know that he wants to do. I knew go to video worship in January. I knew it. I didn't like it. I didn't want to do it, but I knew I had to make some changes, and we did it, and man, what? Look at, look at the blessing we experienced today. And I am so excited for what God has for us here in the future. God is just going to pour, is, you know, we did, the, I spoke at the food ministry Friday. So many people got healed on Friday. So many people got healed. We did the prayer meeting Friday night, and I do it, I do it online. I, I just had the phone on the pulpit, and I'm speaking, and then all of a sudden, it just hit me. I said, there's some now you got a bad toothache, and the Lord says he's taking that pain out of your tooth right now. And then somebody texted me and said, hey, I clocked in right when you started talking about a bad tooth. I've been at the dentist all week, and I haven't been able to eat. I've been afraid to eat. And then I was able to sit down and have dinner with my family and eat with them today because the Lord touched me. She goes, just as you spoke it out. See, and that's what God, God doesn't want to just do that through me. He wants to do it through you, amen. Now you get out your phone, you go live on Facebook. You say, we're going to have a prayer meeting, and you start praying. Maybe not. I'm bold like that. I think everybody wants to pray with me, you know. You should want to. You should want to come and pray. We're, our emphasis right now is the house of prayer. House of prayer. God wants to build a house of prayer. Prayer, you know, we see that sign, prayer changes things. It really works, okay? <laughs> prayer does change things. 
we pray, you know, I know churches all across America today are probably praying for um, Charlotte, and they're probably praying for North Korea. You know, because the North Korea thing is really serious right now. You know, and I believe that things like Charlotte are popping up right now in America to take our eyes off what's really happening. Perry Stone gave a prophetic word about that. He said there's things, there's stirrings in America that the enemy's trying to do so we don't focus on what North Korea is trying to do. The real problem that we have right now. And we need to really pray. Amen? We, we can't just keep just coming and going. We've got to enter in. My sheep hear my voice. I know them. Amen? Enter into being one of his sheep. Live in Christ and receive the real love of God in your life. Amen? Oh, I know, but you've done things. You've done some bad things. How many here has done bad things? And me too. But he still loves me. <laughs> there's, there's nothing. There's nothing. Everybody say nothing. That can separate us from the love of God. I have a word of advice for you married couples. Stop letting the things happen and separate your love right now. You can make that decision. I'm not going to let it separate us. I'm not going to let it separate us. I'm going to love. I'm going to love. Make a decision. I'm going to love. Everybody say love. Wow, that's beautiful. Real love. And number three, no one can condemn you. John 3, 17, For God did not send His Son into this world to condemn the world, but that the world through Him might be saved. So if Jesus didn't come to condemn you, then no one else can condemn you, amen? They might say it, they might think it, but you know what? Who cares? Who cares what people think about you? Who cares what people say about you? Jesus loves you! And He did not come to condemn you. Romans chapter 8, verse 1, it says, There is therefore now no condemnation. Everybody say no. no. To those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh, but walk according to the Spirit. And as I was going through this, you know, I, I, 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 12, for you young people here, and you need to pray. I believe God's going to restore young people to this house like never before. There's going to come an influx of young people, and we might have to turn it up a little bit. It might get a little louder. We might have to, you know, just, we want to minister to our young people. We want a new generation to raise up, amen. That's why God is filling you seniors with a new powerful anointing, that God is going to flood you with an anointing that you can pass down to these young people. But listen, young people, this is what the Word says. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 12. Let no one despise your youth. Let no one despise your youth. The reason why he, he says, let no one despise your youth, because he says, be an example to the believers in word, in conduct, in love, in spirit, in faith, in purity. See, if, if you're being that, you're not giving people a reason to talk bad about you. Not that we should talk bad about each other, but it happens because of our conduct. When people start doing and saying things and living a, a, an unrighteous life, we open that door for that criticism to come. And that's what he said. He said, don't do those things. Don't give them a reason to despise you. Don't give the, the older saints a reason to not let you rise up. Do what is good. Do what is right. Amen? Live a holy life. Live a righteous, pure life. Obey your parents. Thank you, Pastor Jesse. <laughs> but there's no condemnation when we're walking in the Spirit. You know, when you're, when, you know, I don't feel any condemnation unless I'm not doing what I'm supposed to do. Then, when I'm not doing what I'm supposed to do, and I'm I'm blurting off to my wife or whatever, and then I, I feel this, like, that condemning. I open the door to that condemnation of the devil. I just like to keep that door closed. There's no condemnation to those that are walking in the Spirit. 
Because when you're walking in the Spirit, you're not fulfilling the lust of your what? Flesh. So, don't fight against what God wants to do in you. Give in to Him in His way. Let the transformation happen in you. Now listen, I'm going to give you 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 8. It's not on the board. I'm going to read it here. Um, it, it's a different version. I don't, I don't even know what version this is, but it's, it's the word. Love never gives up. Stop wanting to give up. It's easy to give up, but love doesn't give up. I thank God Jesus didn't give up on me. Amen? I got saved, backslid, got saved, backslid. I had a, it was a rough time to get it, you know. And then when I was about 26, I just, I just, I put both feet in the water and I went all in. And I'm not getting out. I'm not getting out. Love never gives up, amen? Love cares more for others than for self. That's one big key to being married. Love cares for other more than for self. Love doesn't want what it doesn't have. Love doesn't want what it doesn't have. We're not trying to get the things we don't have. One of the things that will put out your spiritual fire very quick is materialism. Wanting what you don't have. Going after that. Working, striving after that. Materialism will squash your fire for God. It will put it out. Love doesn't strut. Love doesn't have a swelled head. Love doesn't force itself on others. Love isn't always me first. I got these two highlighted here for marriage. Love doesn't fly off the handle. Amen, Pastor Ron. And here's a real big one for marriage right here. You ready? Love doesn't keep score of the sins of others. Dude, that got you, huh? Because <laughs> we got this list over here on the side. And whenever we get in an argument, we go to the list. Huh? Let's see, what can I bring up right now? And you know, we, I find I used to do that out of protection mode to avert everything away from me. I would pick out something about her and I would speak it out, you know, in a fight. You know, so I, I avert the attention off of me. It's not me that's bad, it's you. Don't judge me. Remember, there's no condemnation in Christ, huh? I've gotten a lot better about that. I try not to do that. Thank you, Delanda. Hallelujah. She confirms it. So love doesn't reveal what others gro when others grovel. Love takes pleasure in the flowering of truth. I guess this is probably the, the biggest thing for marriage. I probably shouldn't say it. <sighs> Love puts up with anything. <laughs> Man! <laughs> I think we could all work on that one, huh? Love puts up with anything? Are you kidding me, God? Love puts up with anything. Now remember, this is how God loves you. So before you think about your mate or you think about somebody you're not really liking right now, God puts up with us. I was going to say you, yes, us. <laughs> yes. God puts up with yes. You and us. <laughs> God puts up with anything. He, listen, he doesn't stop loving you. Now, just because he loves you doesn't mean you're going to go to heaven. Because he loves everybody. Okay, but not everybody loves him. Not everybody has stepped into that love of God. You've got to step into that love, receive that love of God. Amen. Um, okay, love, trust God always. Always. Everybody say always. always. Trust, I mean, love always looks for the best. That's the law of man. She always looks for, thinks of the best for people. You know, and uh, if I... You know, if I tell her, I said, well, you know, there's this struggle. And she's like, don't tell me. I don't want to know. I want to just think the best. And I'm like, amen. She thinks the best about me. She thinks the best for me. I love it. Um, love never looks back. Whew. Love never looks back. But it keeps going to the end. Amen. When's the end? 
when we get there, while we're living. You guys should, should find that and put it up on your mirrors. And, and number one, know this, that's how God loves you. And number two, this is what he's calling us to. As we experience his real love, which that is. He does not condemn you for your past. So let go of it and move forward. Let go of your past. You know, as I was praying for this, I just got in my spirit that there's some older saints that you've been in church for a very long time, but there's been things that have happened along the way in your life that you still remember and you still kind of hold on to them. You don't like to talk about them. You don't like to bring them up because it, it affects you, not in a good way. But you've experienced some traumas in life and, it, and, it's, and it's kind of limiting you as to what God wants for you, what he has for you. And, and just, I'm not done yet, but I think we should just pray right now for a moment. Maybe it's you today. Just bow your heads. If everybody just be respectful and bow your heads for a moment. Close your eyes. I don't want to embarrass anybody. But maybe when I said that right now, something just popped into your spirit that you're thinking of. Something that's happened to you that's it's hard for you. If that's you today, I want you to just raise your hand because I'm going to pray for you. We're going to break that off. Yeah, amen. Amen. Anybody else? Amen. 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 See, God knows what he's talking about. Father, right now, you saw those hands that went up. And I pray right now that there, there just be a release off of these people of God today. That, Lord, that they can let it go today and be freed from it in Jesus' name. That, Lord, that it just go to the, to the pit, God. And, Lord, that they'd just be resurrected in a new joy today in the name of Jesus. That, Lord, that your real love would just come into that area of their life today and just fill it right now. That healing would come right now. Yeah, just let it flow, God, right now, that healing. In Jesus' name, amen. God's real love, amen? And number four, no one, everybody say no one, can separate you from the real love of God. No one. God has gone all in with you to give you abundant life. That is his intention. Not just life, but abundant life. He doesn't want you just to survive. He wants you to thrive. Amen? He wants you to thrive in relationships. He wants you to thrive physically. He wants you to thrive financially. He came to give you life and life more abundantly. Amen? He came to give you an overcomer's life, a healed life. There's nothing that can stop you from this life. Only what you receive and what you receive can stop it. So I ask you this question, what have you been receiving and what are you believing? Because if you can begin to receive that whole love of God into your life, it's amazing what God will do. He'll physically heal you. He'll mentally heal you. He'll restore relationships. It's amazing what God will do as you let go of those things that you feel like are trying to drive a wedge in between you and God. You just surrender it to Jesus. People have a hard time receiving this kind of love from God because they don't feel lovable. Not everybody feels all bright and cheery lovable. You know, sometimes we come in and we feel like we've been run over by a truck and that nobody loves us. I was just thinking of a, you know how we get afraid for people to love us because we've been hurt. So we walk around like this. 
Come here, honey. Give me a hug. Give me a hug. Come on, give me a hug. We walk around like that. You know, people want to, want to get close to you. They want to love you. They want to just give you a hug. Come on, Marvin. Come give me a hug, buddy. But we don't want, want them to get too close because, listen, if they got too close, they might find out about the real me. They might find out about my pain. They might find out what's happened to me. They might find out my realities. So we just walk around like this. Nobody loves me. I don't have any friends. Of course you don't. Take down your arms. Stop pushing people away. Experience the real love of God. Amen? You know, sometimes... We just got to expose things to God. Sometimes we just got to bring it into the light. When you bring it into the light, then God can heal you. James 5, 16, it says, Make this your common practice. Confess your sins to one another and pray for one and each other so that you can live together whole and healed. God wants us to live together whole and healed. But if we don't confess it, get it out of our system, then it's like it's always there. It's like a bad nut in your stomach. You're like, ugh. I got this, you know, I'm good, but I got this thing. Ugh. You got to get rid of the thing. You got to confess it. Honey, I got this thing. I got this pain in my gut. And this is what that pain is. What would they think? What would they think if I tell them my pain? What would they think if I tell them what happened to me? And the devil is a liar. He'll always tell you this. You can have that thing. It's okay. You can keep it to yourself. It's okay. The devil will always lie. Oh, they'll condemn you. But remember, there's no condemnation in Christ. Amen? Confess your sins, and it, and it may not even be a sin that you've done. See, it may be a sin committed against you that you're ashamed of, that you've been holding on to. And, and learning how to let that go and just give it to God. Just get it out and say, ah, I'm done! I'm done! And then why don't you come back and play a little as we finish up today? We're still going to take communion in a few minutes. But when we confess, this helps us to walk in the Spirit and in holiness. It, if you don't, you're holding back part of your life and giving that control to the enemy. It's like confession takes away the control. Amen? It's like, because you tell you, you'll say, Right now, he's even telling you, it's okay. He's not talking about you. <laughs> I hear it right now. That's, that's what he's saying. The devil's telling you, it's okay. No, he's not. It's all right. You're, you're okay. We are the only ones that can stop the flow of God in our lives the way that God intends. Remember, he gave but all. He went all in. You went all in. Are you all in today? Are you all in with Jesus? You got both feet in the water and you just let him come into every area of your life. You know, as I was praying, I just heard this question. Where was Jesus when this happened to me? Where was the Lord when I was in that? And I, and I heard that question as I was praying, and I, I even typed it out. I said, you may have questions about things that have happened to you in the past, and where was God in all of that? And I heard this as I wrote this. 
He was there. And that's why you're here today. Are you ready to just go all in with Jesus? To experience his real love. Why don't we stand? Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Lord, here we are standing before you today. Lord, we all desire the real love of God. We all desire, we know that you have given it, you have poured it out. You sent your very best, Jesus, into this, this sinful world to pay the price for us so that we could experience the love of God. And maybe you're here today and you say, Pastor Ron, I've been holding my arms out. And I know I'm saved, but I, I need to go all in today. I need to let go of those things. I need to let go of my past, and I just need to just get in with God. I need, to, I need the real love of God today. If that's you, just raise your hand. Yeah, amen, 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 amen. I mean, I think if we, we would all just admit it, we all need that, amen? We all got little tags that we're trying to hold on. It's like when you buy a new shirt and you're wearing it, and you got that tag hanging there, and you got to get that tag off, amen? And I believe God wants to cut that tag off today in the name of Jesus. So, Father, just lift your hands to the Lord. Just lift your hands up to Jesus. Father, we, as we come before you, to worship you, to glorify you, God. Lord, I pray that, Lord, that you'd cut them tags off today in the name of Jesus. Lord, that those tags that have been, Lord, just hanging around our past, God, I pray you cut them off right now. I just see so clearly that tag that, that the enemy's tried to put on you. I pray that tag off right now in the name of Jesus. I pray that label off of you today in the name of Jesus. I pray that those words that the enemy's tried to put on you get off you in the name of Jesus. That, Lord, that your love, your real love right now would just come down. Just, we're going to sing with Nydia right now. Just, just worship the Lord with her. Just open up your heart to the Lord. Let him just come into those areas of your life right now. And just heal you right now. Yes, Lord. trying to tell people today you're not lovable. Yes, you are in the name of Jesus. You are lovable. You are loved. You are loved in the name of Jesus. Jesus loves you. Jesus loves you. Hide yourself to So you don't give your heart in peace.
just receive your love, your real love, God. Lord, and I thank you that today you're breaking off our hindrances so that we can step into it. We're going to take communion at this time. I'm going to ask the communion service to come. If you believe in Jesus, that he died for you and raised from the dead, then you're, you're good to take communion today. If you haven't confessed Jesus as your Lord yet, let's do it right now. Jesus, I, I receive you. I receive your love, and I thank you that you died for me and that you rose from the dead. You believe that in your heart today, you're ready for communion. And the way we do it is they're going to be here, and I'm going to ask that you come and that you get the, the elements and hold on to them, and we'll take it all together in a few minutes. So as Nydia continues to lead us in worship, just come and get the elements this morning. Today, you're not just eating a cracker and drinking some juice. It represents the, the body and the blood of Jesus. It represents what he's done for us. I'm not partaking of a cracker and juice. I'm partaking of everything it represents. I'm partaking in the forgiveness of all my sins. I'm partaking in the healing of all disease. I'm partaking in what Jesus has done for me. Amen. That's the whole thing. So just lift up that bread today. In 1 Corinthians 11, 23. For I received from the Lord that which I delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he's betrayed, he took bread. And when he given thanks, he broke. He just snapped that cracker. 
And he said, take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let's take it. Praise you, Jesus. We are so thankful, Lord, that you are willing. And God, that you gave your very best so that we could have life. And I pray, Lord, that every one of us here today would just receive that abundant life in Jesus. Lord, that we would accept your real love for us and what you have for us. Lord, your real love just in, be infused in our hearts today. God, that we just move forward in real love. And we thank you, Jesus, that you were willing to shed your blood for us. We can be forgiven and free, or we can be healed. Lord, so I pray again for every person here to be healed in Jesus' name. Let every disease get off the people of God. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood. This do often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Let's take the cup. Hallelujah, Jesus. We praise you and we thank you, Father God. We thank you that you sent forth the word to heal us of all disease. And that today, Lord, we've walked through the word and that healing will be our portion today. Lord, we just receive what you have for us. And Father, I pray for even those that can't be here today, that Lord, that you touch them, God. Heal them, God. Strengthen them. Encourage them today, Father with your real love and let healing flow I pray a blessing over every person here today that you bless them indeed you cover them, protect them and keep them and Lord that your joy would be our strength in Jesus name and everybody said Amen let's give the Lord a hand Hallelujah. <laughs> Wednesday night we're going to be worshiping and praying Come on out and worship with the Lord with us and just enter into prayer with us and uh, just let God's love move in your life today. Have a great day. We'll see you tonight at 6 o'clock for the service. Come back tonight and worship with us. Celebrate with our Arabic brothers and sisters.